So for today's speed paint, I am actually going to be painting on canvas. So it's an acrylic painting, unlike watercolor, which I usually do. And this is just your kind of traditional canvas from Michaels. Fairly cheap. I think it came in a pack of five and I bought them on sale. And it's inspired by folk art designs. So I really, really love folk art. It's very inspiring to me. Um, I love folk art of all types, Scandinavian folk art. I also like henna designs, like traditional Indian henna designs. So you'll see maybe a little bit of that in this. But I wanted to draw a unicorn. I found this really cool reference of a folk art horse. And this just kind of went from there. I was just sketching out some folk art designs um, for smaller paintings. And this just was one of them. And I decided to make it a bigger painting instead of a smaller painting. So the supplies I'm going to be using are actually just really cheap acrylics. And these are the three brands I have. You can buy these at Walmart or Hobby Lobby or Michaels. They're like 99 cents a bottle, maybe less. They're decent quality. I mean, they're not what you would want to put in a, a gallery maybe or sell maybe. I don't know. They're not something that's going to last for generations, but they're pretty good. And I'm also using some super cheap brushes. These are definitely not expensive, high quality brushes, but they work pretty well for acrylic painting and I've used them for years and I've used this acrylic paint for years. And I'm just gonna be using a paper plate as a palette because my palette right now has some oil paint on it that's not quite dry. But let's hop into the speed paint. Um, and for this, I kind of wanted to use a little bit more pastel-like colors. Um, I'm not making the unicorn pure white. So in a lot of pictures or images of unicorn, it'll be this perfect Snow White unicorn. Um, but I wanted it to have some sort of dimension and different colors throughout the unicorn. So it is white and then it's got a very pale blue and a very pale pink. And there's my cat causing trouble. She'll appear multiple times through this video um, to try and wreak havoc. She does not, but she tries. So if you're interested in learning more about folk art, I am not probably the best expert to go to. I got into folk art and folk art designs years ago when I started collecting Russian nesting dolls. I think I have something like 60 nesting dolls at this point. Um, and that really started my, I guess, slight obsession with folk art patterns and designs. But recently I've been getting a few more books here and there on folk art of the Americas or Scandinavian folk art. But one place I go for visual reference is Pinterest. It's not so great for historical reference, but you can find a lot of visual reference for whatever kind of folk art you're looking for, whether it be American folk art, whether it be Dutch folk art or Scandinavian or Russian. It's a really good place to kind of start looking for visual inspiration. However, with that said, this is definitely my interpretation on folk art designs or patterns that I've seen online. This definitely couldn't qualify as any one genre or type of folk art. In fact, it's kind of like the sun that I'm painting now is probably slightly inspired by henna designs, like Indian henna designs that you would paint on your hand more than a traditional Scandinavian folk art. And there's not a whole lot of traditional folk art that I have seen, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but that I have seen that uses this more pastel color palette that I'm trying to go for. So I guess I'll talk a little bit about how I actually transferred the design onto canvas. So what I started out with was probably a two inch by two inch small sketch in my sketchbook. Like I said, I was actually working on folk art designs for tiny paintings. But I was like, oh, I really like this one. So I liked it so much I decided to do a larger painting of it. And I basically just re-sketched it from my sketchbook reference onto this larger piece of canvas. And to do that sketching, I actually used a few different colors of Prismacolor color erase pencils. They work pretty well and that way when I'm using multiple colors, I can highlight certain things or minimize other things just with the colors I'm using. However, when you're using kind of a colored pencil or even a dark pencil, with this cheap acrylic paint, 
sometimes you'll actually need multiple coats of the paint to get it a thick flat color. Um, I've used professional, well, student grade acrylic paint before um, and that usually has a much thicker coverage than the cheaper and they just end up needing maybe a few extra coats. Also for the hair of the unicorn, I started with a bottom coat of yellow because I put a coat of metallic acrylic paint on top. So in some key spots, I've used a gold metallic acrylic paint to kind of give it that more unicorn vibe rather than like regular horse, if you couldn't tell because of the unicorn horn. But the metallic acrylics can be very thin and sometimes you'll have to put a base coat under it. Um, I've never used a student grade or professional grade metallic acrylic, so I'm not sure how that would hold up, but I do know that in general, um, spending a little bit more on acrylics can definitely get you better coverage. But I, they're not my primary painting medium, so I typically just stick with the cheaper paints. One thing about doing these paintings, and I have several of them, I got really into doing a bunch of these when I was in graduate school because just going over it and like doing all of these fine details is very, or was very relaxing for me when I was trying to de-stress from the everyday stress of my graduate program. But they are really detail oriented, like there's a lot to them, so they take quite a while to do and you're just going back over certain areas and you paint part of a flower and then go back to it. So it can be a little bit frustrating at times, but I kind of find it to be frustrating in a good way as opposed to frustrating in a way of like your science experiment isn't working and you don't know what to do, which is usually what happened in graduate school. If you've been there, you know. But now I've started on probably my favorite part, and it's of course the part towards the end, but it's where I'm adding all of these very small dots. So I add them around flowers, I add them anywhere I kind of wanna draw more attention to or give more detail to. Um, the small dots are actually one of my favorite things about folk art paintings. I love the little small dots all over. Some, some folk art, not all of them have dots, but the ones that do, and also henna designs have a lot of small little dots, and I just really find that aesthetically pleasing. So anytime I do a folk art painting, it's got a lot of little dots, and they're insanely time consuming, but they're my favorite part of the painting. And here I'm working on the sun, and it turned out to be one of my favorite parts of the painting. I actually thought when I was first painting it, I was like, oh, I don't like it. It's too bright, it's too yellow, it's too red. But once I had added in all of the dots, and I use black, white, orange, whatever color dot that I'm feeling goes best, once I had added in all the dots, I was like, oh, I actually really like this part of the painting now. Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, but I still am kind of doing a little bit of background painting too, and it's not just adding the finishing touches. So while waiting on some spots to dry, I would go, back in and do other things um, but this is a lot of dots and I'm adding white highlights to the leaves and background to the saddle and I wanted it to be like a really fun saddle on the unicorn like it's like hey you can come and ride me and we'll go do magical things but it doesn't have I think it's called a, a bridle I'm not sure but the thing the horse wears through its mouth where you can kind of like guide it I didn't want the unicorn to have one of those. I wanted it to be like, well, if you want to ride the unicorn, you have to do what the unicorn wants to do and go frolic through fields of magical folk art flowers. So yeah, that was my <laughs> inspiration for like the saddle. Like, he's fine if you want to tag along, but you can't tell him what to do because he's a magical unicorn. And this is one of my favorite parts is the black dots I added around the hair of the unicorn. I think it makes it really, really pop out in a very aesthetically pleasing, for me anyway, way. And I just really, I really like it. It's kind of like adding a, a low light and the gold hair is like a highlight. But the last bit of this is just a lot of adding dots. And I'm sorry about the lighting changes in some of this. Um, I try and paint during the day when I have sunlight and like good natural light. 
but that always doesn't happen because sometimes I'm busy when there's good light outside and I end up wanting to paint at night or something. So I just kind of have to work with the lighting that I have right now. But hopefully I'm going to get better at lighting in future videos. I also want to apologize for any issues that there might be with the editing or the narration. My computer was not having it when I wanted to edit this video. I don't know why. It was just being a little bit of a diva. I don't know. But I'm almost done with the painting. I'm approaching the end of the painting here. I'm just adding the very last little details here and there. And I really, really enjoy how this painting turned out. Oh, and there's my cat. How are you, Hattie? So this is Hattie. She um, likes to visit when I paint and cause trouble. She has a twin sister named Millie who sometimes visits, but she is normally a little less crazy. And I am going to show you one way to finish off a canvas painting, and that is actually to paint around the outside of the canvas. A lot of people don't think about this, and I originally got the idea from my best friend who is an artist. And for her senior art show in college, she painted metallic gold around all of her paintings. And it's nice if you aren't going to frame your canvas. But with that, this is the end of my painting. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you like this and you want to see more, please remember to subscribe and give my video a thumbs up. And thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this painting. And I hope it inspired you to paint magical folk art unicorns of your own. See you next time.